And now that we've actually talked about Lagrange points in Universe Sandbox 2 and in Space Engine, I figured why not try to recreate all of this stuff in our amazing Kerbal Space Program, the best game of the year 2015. So let's try to talk a little bit more about Lagrange points and let's actually try to place a craft into Lagrange point in KSP. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And the first thing we're going to talk about is, of course, how we're going to achieve this. Well, first of all, in Kerbal Space Program, a vanilla version, without the mods, you will not be able to achieve any Lagrange points because the way the game works is actually by using uh, spheres of influences of different objects. So, for example, if, when you're in orbit around Kerbin, um, the moon's gravitational pull will not affect you at all. And then when you go to the moon, the Kerbin's gravitational pull will not affect you at all. But there is, however, a mod. Of course, there is a mod. There's a mod for everything in case. ASP. And this mod I'm talking about is called Principia. It's mod in development. It's been uh, in development for almost two years now. And basically what it allows or what it changes um, in the game is that it actually um, introduces something called and body gravity, meaning that all of the objects will now affect each other, which is absolutely crazy. It may actually destroy my CPU, but it's worth the risk. And we're going to do this in uh, using this mod and we're going to do this mathematically as well. And so in the first part of this video, we're going to actually just uh, talk about uh, Kerbin and the Moon. We're going to try to find Lagrange point, uh, at least one of them, L1 specifically, um, uh, between these two objects. And then we're going to place an, uh, some kind of a satellite right here in between them. And then in the next video, we're going to try to do the same for Kerbin and the Sun. And we'll try to take the same kind of a photo that uh, we've talked about in the previous video where I showed you what NASA did. Uh, they had this amazing, really cool photo from 2015. Uh, it was actually a video but it was a combination of different photos when the moon sort of passes uh, in front of the earth and you get to see this really cool passage so we'll try to recreate this in the next video and so okay let's do some math first before we create a craft we need to do some math because this is going to be a relatively complex procedure so what we'll need for this is of course the mass of Kerbin that's right here we'll also need the mass of the moon which is which is right here and the formula we'll be using is on your screen right now. It's basically um, M2 is the lighter mass, M1 is the heavier mass, then there's a cubic root in there, and R is the distance between the objects. And here we're talking about, um, I believe it's 12 million meters. I'm not sure where it is here. I don't remember seeing it in the game, but I know that it's 12 millimeters uh, or 12,000 kilometers just by heart because I've done this many, many times. And uh, because uh, we've used this in one of the previous videos as well. And so, all right, so that's uh, step number one. And uh, to find a Lagrange point, if you actually do the math, uh, what you're finding is R. You're finding the distance between the central object and um, the point L1 that, that is somewhere between these planets or the, these objects. And so it's between the moon and the planet. And what L1 represents is basically a point in space where Kerbin pulls on the object and moon pulls on the object at the same time. And they kind of um, counter can cancel each other. Basically, they cancel each other's pull forces. And so the object just stays here. It just kind of floats in, in this particular space. But before we can achieve this floaty object, and by the way, I've already done the math for you. If you want to try this yourself, you're more than welcome to. But the distance between uh, the moon and this uh, point in space is uh, exactly... 2,198,344 meters. And so this is where we're going to be launching our object. And what, what I'm basically going to be doing is I'm going to first achieve an orbit of about 2.2 uh, uh, million meters uh, around moon. And then when we get to this location right here, we're going to start a retrograde boost because we need to slow down. And specifically here, we want to actually have a very specific velocity around Kerbin. Now, this is actually going to be the hard part. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later. But what we need to do is right at this point, our velocity in compared to um, or basically around Kerbin has to be at exactly 443.1 meters per second. So 443 meters per second, but it's unfortunately not shown in the game. And so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll use the velocity of the moon. And uh, as you can see in the bottom there, the velocity of the moon is 542. And what we want to do is 443. So we'll actually have to slow down by about 
hundred uh, 260 meters but uh, we'll talk more about this later so let's actually uh, create a craft first and I want to make um, some sort of a telescope thingy or something that will allow us to take photos as well and I do have a mod for that uh, there's a lot of different um, photo thingies like for example I believe there is uh, here we go um, or then industrial command our pick to zoom 2000 this is a pretty powerful telescope we'll, we'll actually use that as our main sort of a attachment and then we'll have everything else um, to increase our viewing distances and to basically give us a a chance to take some really cool photos so basically this craft is going to be filled with various uh photo apparatuses or is it apparati i don't even know anyway so this is a pretty awesome uh, device it's um it's a mod that i totally forgot what it's called but it does add all of these cool um really cool telescopes this is kind of a replica of hubble telescope i believe and uh you also get these panels that uh, give it basically energy uh so there's that and then there is a few other ones that will add as well and here you have it, our Krubble telescope with not one, not two, but four different cameras. There's a very large uh, Command R Pictozoom 2000. There is a smaller Ordnance Industrial Pictozoom 1000. There's also a Science Cam and a Night Vision Cam, uh, all of which will provide us with a lot of observational data for this particular mission. So uh, let's uh, launch this craft. I'm going to skip the part where I'm going to be basically launching the actual craft uh, what I'll be showing you is the transfer to the moon and basically where I'll show you how to achieve the L1 uh, Lagrange point around the moon and separation of the last stage I am now uh, in an orbit around the moon and uh, the altitude above the moon surface is uh, right here it's uh, 1900 98 kilometers or basically the semi um, major axis here is 2,198,344 meters because obviously moon's radius is also 200 kilometers and you have to take that into consideration. So this is our telescope. We're uh, just going to need to have our panels extended, but we're not in the right location just yet. So what we'll need to do now is uh, really plan this out carefully. So what we want to do is uh, we want to be right between the moon and the earth and we want to have a very circular orbit so i kind of just play around with this until the orbit was almost completely perfectly circular and once you've done that uh you're going to be engaging your engines and i do have four engines uh, in the back there with about something like a um, kilometer per second delta v left to try to decelerate so how much do you decelerate so let me just show you uh how to calculate all this and uh we'll talk a little bit more about it as well all right, so there is my craft, uh, almost completely between the moon and Kerbin, and right, uh, right when it's between them, and basically that's in a few seconds or maybe a possibly a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, decrease my velocity. So right now I'm moving in this direction. I'm orbiting around the moon, and my velocity around the moon is 172 meters per second. Uh, the moon's velocity is 542 meters per second. I want to have velocity around Kerbin of 443. If this is 543, that means that I have to slow down by about 100 meters per second this way. And since I'm already moving 172 this way, uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm adding 172 and also one, uh, 100. So I'm going to be slowing down into this direction, this way, by about 272 meters per second. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's really, really not. Uh, because what I'm trying to achieve here is obviously... I'm trying to decelerate um, and I'm trying to move around Kerbin at a very specific velocity so that I can actually stay in the Lagrange point around it. So let's actually try this right now. Uh, so 172 is going that way right now. As soon as I start um, blasting my engines, you'll notice that it's going to start decreasing and we want this to be minus 100. So basically, uh, we're going to be moving that way 100 meters per second which will give us a total uh, um, velocity of uh, almost 443 around Kerbin possibly plus minus 5 meters per second but that's okay just for demonstration purposes that's I think that's okay so I'm going a little bit too fast here I'm going to slow down and steady now steady 70 80 90 and boom 100 all right maybe a little bit more there we go 101 so right now i should technically be moving at 440 ish meters per second 
around Kerbin and my orbit is going to be following the moon's orbit and we're going to be flying this way. If everything was calculated correctly and if I did this correctly, I should be in L1 point. I think I'm a little bit off actually because I did this a little bit too early. But I should now be in the uh, Lagrange point around the moon and we'll see this as soon as I accelerate time. So let's see. Uh, you, you'll notice that there's like vectors forming here. That's because this mod does kind of calculate things a little bit differently. Um, but do not worry. Do not concern yourself with such petty things because I think we are in L1 point right now. So we're not really moving. Uh, maybe we're not exactly there. Well, this is as close as I'll get in this particular try. Uh, but if I accelerate this, look at that. See how we're actually staying in the same point? So we're now technically in an almost complete L1 um, orbit around Kerbin and uh, uh, between the Kerbin and the Moon. So basically we've, we've achieved the Lagrange point. Now, just to celebrate this, commemorate this, let's open our um, telescope. I think we need to open the lens guard and let's take a photo. Let's actually take some photos before we disappear from this Lagrange point. Now, the thing about L1 and also L2 Lagrange points is that they're not very stable. As a matter of fact, um, every single satellite that we've sent to uh, Lagrange points between the Sun and, um, and Earth, all of them bring fuel with them because they always have to correct their orbit. Now, uh, what they do is actually... In the Lagrange point, like I mentioned in the previous video, there's actually an imaginary orbit, an imaginary, imaginary orbit right here that you can orbit in, and it's called uh, Le Sageux orbit, after a French person who found it, uh, who discovered it. And uh, so this particular orbit is actually... Um, activate camera. Oh, look at that. Look at this beauty. Let's see how much we can actually zoom in. Whoa, that is crazy. Th this is a pretty cool camera. Uh, so cool, in fact, uh, that I do not even see the surface because it, it didn't actually procedurally generate yet. Okay, let's now look at Kerbin. Uh, so yeah, this particular orbit, um, you can stay in it for as long as you correct your orbital parameters once in a while because uh, due to interactions with other bodies and due to the fact that the actual semi-major axis is not really circular here and the actual orbit is not particularly circular um, you would definitely have to bring fuel so you can actually correct your orbit once in a while and i think my carbon is bugging out because why not um this is actually a surprisingly powerful telescope can i actually possibly even see other objects probably not but let's uh let's see how far we can actually zoom in i want to see how how far we can zoom in on on the moon here uh, or maybe you can find Minmus. No, I, I don't think it's going to be doable because we need to actually know where it is. And I don't know where Minmus is. We're going to zoom in on the horizon here. See if we can actually... Oh, too much. See if we can see the horizon. And there you go. This is the moon's horizon. It's a surprisingly a powerful telescope. I can actually zoom in even more, but I don't really see any details. So there's no point. Uh, but this is basically what you would see if you were to use this telescope from the Lagrange point. Um, in this particular location. So this is actually what I wanted to see. And let's see how, how long will actually last in here. Uh, I'm going to actually accelerate this a little bit more and to see how long will my spacecraft last in this particular point until it finally loses its orbital parameters. Um, you can actually kind of see the time above there. And it's probably not going to last very long because I'm pretty sure this is not a perfect location for this point. But it is as accurate as you can get. See how it's actually staying in the same sort of position. Um, and uh, surprisingly, um, most of the craft that stay in this uh, location can stay in there for a long time, depending on how much fuel they bring. Uh, one of the missions we actually currently have uh, brought enough fuel for like 50 years. So it's actually going to be in this particular location for about 50 years. Now, am I still there? I think so. Maybe not. Maybe I'm actually... Oh, no, I think we're actually slowly moving away. There we go. We've now uh, left the like L1 point and are moving in a slightly different orbit around Kerbin. And so, yes, L1 point has been de-established. Uh, but essentially, this is how you can try to do this yourself uh, using the mod called Principia. And uh, I'm going to show you in a second what else this mod does, which is actually pretty crazy. If you go to Joule system, and if you actually look at what happens here, and this is actually one of the reasons this mod is not officially released yet, and that's because um, apparently Joule, the way it's formed with all of its moons and, and so on, is not a very stable system. As a matter of fact, if you accelerate time, you'll notice that at some point, 
one of the moons decides to, and specifically I think it's uh, Tylo, because it's it's a very massive moon that influences a lot of different other moons. Uh, a lot of the planets here, or a lot of the moons here, will start destabilizing and actually will eventually fly away. And this actually sometimes even crashes the game, but um, there is a new version of um, Principia coming out very soon that will hopefully fix this. But you'll see that you can kind of see how they interact with each other and their orbits start changing because this is no longer a single body uh, gravitational calculation, but it actually um, takes each of these bodies into consideration. And then basically, here comes Val. Bye bye, Val. You're about to get kicked out of the system. Uh, so yeah, each of these bodies is taken into consideration and then each of their orbits is individually calculated um, based on interaction with each other. So it's a pretty awesome mod. I hope they actually keep developing it. <laughs> uh, Tyler, you're such a jerk. You just kicked out Val out of its own orbit. Um, but um, yeah, so give this mod a try. It's actually kind of difficult to find this right now. I, I was only able to locate this on IRC channel uh, but if you look up, if you Google up Principia, you'll get a link that will lead you to the same IRC channel that will then help you find the mod. But uh, if they release a stable version, um, and I heard it's coming this month, actually, in February 2016, maybe you'll be able to find this publicly as well. Um, so that's uh, basically how and what this mod does. It creates more realism in Kerbal Space Program adds a lot of really cool features and I think uh, realism to me is something that's really important at least for Kerbal Space Program and um, at some point we'll try to explore this a little bit in more detail we'll actually try to play with more physics and more different um, physical parameters of various planets and orbits uh, but uh, now hopefully you know how to find Lagrange point between the moon and Kerbin and in the next video we're going to do the same for the sun and Kerbin and see how this goes anyway so let's actually run this for a few more minutes and uh, see what happens to Joule system so it's about to lose its satellites because I think Tylo is about to kick everyone out. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like this video, and don't forget to share this with people that like space and also Kerbal Space Program. In the next video, we're going to be doing more Kerbal Space, we're going to do more Universe Sandbox and more other space videos with awesomeness in them. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll game you guys later. Bye-bye.